It says the current loop shown in the below figure below lies in the plane of the page. Okay, so this is the literal uh, view of the loop, like as it appears, it's just flat against the screen. It's not something that's rotated in some way, it's just flat against the screen. The angle given fully specified, up, yeah, that's why it says parallelogram. It's not a perspective view of rectangle, it's just parallelogram. Parallelogram pictured, the magnetic field lies in the plane of the page and points up, yeah. Determine the net force and the net torque on the loop. Um, I'm tempted to say net force will be zero um, because this is what I'm looking at. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly do the right hand rule, uh, starting with, let me label all the segments of the wire. Uh, one, two, so one goes here, two goes there, uh, three and four. So when you look at one, so again, I'm using this formula, uh, force on a current, magnetic force on a current carrying wire is current times L cross B. So I do the L cross B with each segment of the wire. So for the top, I, my current goes from right to left. So L cross B that's pointing out of the board. There's a force one pointing out of the board. Um, the, for the segment two, uh, <laughs> how do I, um, <laughs> sorry, it's a kind of, <sighs> Yeah, something like this. So this is the direction of the first vector, slightly uh, downward then to the left. So L cross B. So um, the, the important thing here is that force points into the board, into the page. And I think that's right. Um, yeah, yeah, into the page. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom segment, the current is going from left to right, uh, left to, wait. Yeah, so, okay, this is left, left to right, L cross B. So that point, wait, L cross B. Oh, I, did, I think I did the top one wrong. So top one should be, yeah, L cross B that points into the page. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, the doing the mirror image, it's not natural. It, leads to mistakes. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, the current from right to left uh, across the magnetic field to upward um, and the cross product points into the page. And the bottom is then uh, right, left to right uh, current cross B, the pr cross product points out of the page. And finally, this last segment here, um, you do. <laughs> so this is the direction of the current across. Uh, so I want to be able to curl up my fingers in the vertical direction. So yeah, the so this is the IL uh, cross uh, B. So in any other orientation, my fingers don't curl in the direction of the current, which is vertically upward. So that points. Uh, so this is the out of the page for you guys. So. That's the direction of the force. Yeah, so this is what I was looking at. Um, when you imagine pairing these two forces and pairing these two forces, you can see that those forces add up to zero because the magnitudes of these forces will be the same. Same length, the same current, same angle. So the force on one and force on three will cancel each other out. And the same deal with the force on two and force on four. So the net force will be zero. And that's a, uh, it's common for whenever the current carrying loop is in a uniform magnetic field, you need a uh, non-uniform magnetic field to apply a net force on a magnetic dipole. In a uniform field, there is no net torque on magnetic or uh, electric dipole. So now the magnitude of the net torque is Okay, so I think the, the force of figures that I drew will be useful. Hmm. 
Um, <laughs> so this is gonna be a talk about a very um, weird axis because if I'm looking at this right, the uh, yeah, and I guess you get you you get the situation because of this weird angle here. Um, in the previous case we looked at, the current here was just the vertical aligned to the magnetic field. So we could say, oh, no forces there. But here, now that the current is at an angle, uh, there's going to be a net torque due to these two. So, um, so yeah, it, it's, uh, uh, fortunately, they don't ask us for the direction. They only ask us for the magnitude, which means I can, uh, I think I can do this. I can, I can and I need to fall back on the more general expression for torque. Because, so um, you saw me in a previous question, you saw me do this. The net torque is, and then I just wrote down the, uh, components of the torque that will be positive. Um, and if there had been any, I would have written down, com then I would have subtracted the components of um, torque that would have been uh, negative. So that's what I would have done if there were any uh, torques that were going counterclockwise. Now, this is something that's possible when the only when the sense of rotation due to torque is within a plane or it's within the, the plane that you're looking at and once your torque is no longer describing rotation on a single plane um, or in you know, other fancier words, these, um, these torque vectors, they don't necessarily have to be collinear. They don't have to point in the same or the exact opposite direction. They can point in any arbitrary direction. And once they do, then you have to start treating them as vectors. Um, and, uh, and that's what I'm gonna need to do. So. So I'm gonna consider the torque about the center point here. And, and I'm going to have to deal with the, uh, oh wait. Hmm. <laughs> um, let me let me track back a little bit. I'm remembering uh, working out this problem before. So there's the long way and there's the short way. The long way is the way that I was just about to do. <laughs> that's the way. Um, that's the long way. That the way I was just about to do. Um, and I'm. Th what reminded me was uh, how these two wires are offset. And that offset ends up uh, mattering. And uh, the long way would be working all this out and actually doing it that way. Uh, let me not do it that way. Let me do it the short way. And I'll just give you the assurance that when and if you do this the long way, the um, the result from long way will agree with the re result from the short way. So <laughs> let me show you the what the short way approach will be. Short way approach is to use this formula. This is one of the formulas in the textbook. I think that's a probably linked from hint, which is the formula for torque or uh, torque on a magnetic dipole due to a magnetic field. That torque is given by the magnetic dipole moment cross product with the magnetic field. And the textbook section also defines the magnetic dipole moment, which is defined as the current times the area, where the area element is, um, or area vector is defined so that 
um, it's defined using right hand rule actually. If you so um, so let me erase all these. None of these are necessary <laughs> for this uh, shortcut approach. Um, so you see the sense in which this uh, uh, current is flowing around this loop. It's going counterclockwise. So the right hand rule to determine, so the surface normal is going to be a vector that's perpendicular to this surface. That vector can, in this view, it can point into the page or it can point out of the page. Those are the two possible directions for surface normal. And the way the right hand rule is used is it, it when you have a current loop, right hand rule is used to choose between those two. And you uh, orient your right hand so that your fingers curl, uh, wait, I need to do this right. Okay, yeah. Fingers curl in the direction of the current. So I, my fingers are right now curling in the counterclockwise direction and the thumb points out of the page. So um, of these two possible directions, the direction that's picked by the right hand rule is, um, is this direction here, the direction that's pointing out of the board. So that's going to be the, so that's going to be the uh, direction of the, direction of the area vector. So that's also going to be the direction of the magnetic dipole moment. So that, so that direction is just straight out, out of the page, um, just perpendicular. So this makes uh, what we do here easy. The torque is uh, simply going to be this uh, magnetic dipole moment cross product with the magnetic field, which points to, uh, point to left. Um, so this uh, left toward the direction is gonna be the direction of the torque uh, which is, uh, I guess, putting all this together, I A cross B. And you might be wondering, hey, what, what is the thing I was talking about before with rotation being in a weird direction? Uh, it turns out when you do this analysis very carefully, accounting for all the different positions where the force is acting, then, um, then they all work out so that the net torque just points to the uh, net torque just points to the uh, points to the left. So let me actually sorry I'm <laughs> getting my directions <laughs> correct. So it's uh, uh, a cross b point to left right. Uh, sorry, it looks a little bit okay. Yeah. So the net torque points to left. So that's gonna be it. Um, so let me finish this question here. Uh, let me just work out the numbers. So I think by the geometry shown here, I, I know I don't know. Um, so it's a 60 degree, 80 centimeters. Yeah, I think I need to figure out the height. Um, that's gonna, yeah, that, that's gonna involve, I think a square root. Um, so let me work out the number here. So the torque, num uh, the formula wise, it's pretty simple. Torque is given by, uh, so IA cross B, and since A and B are perpendicular, the magnitude is simply IAB. And I think uh, I'm given all the numbers. I current is, yeah, 10 ampere. A, uh, I need to figure that out. Uh, let me just do that on Wolfram Alpha. B is given here, 2.5 Tesla. So, uh, oh, I guess I can figure out the expression for A. So I have the, the area of parallelogram is the base times the height. So really the only number I don't have outright is the height. Uh, I can express it in terms of this here. Let me call that S. Then height should be equal to um, S times cosine of uh, 60 degrees. Or if I call this theta, it would be cosine of theta. So this expression here would be I B times the area, which is the base times the height uh, or S cosine theta. So let me plug in the numbers. And since this uh, has that long way, short way, let me plug in the numbers, show that the short way is correct. At least I 
that I programmed it correctly. <laughs> and and uh, I'll, I'll leave the long way up for you to do if you want to do it. But if uh, someone's looking for my advice, my advice should be, don't worry about it. Um, it's one of those things that, uh, it, um, I, you know, it, it, I think it's good to look into the detail and when you figure it, figure it out for yourself, as I did when I was programming in this question, you will, you will learn a lot from going through that. But um, it's, uh, I think it's sufficiently confusing that it, um, that I would be fine not putting people through it. Uh, okay, so 0 0.1 Newton meter. So that's what the answer should be. Let me plug it in and see if it is. Uh, yeah, net force is still zero. I think it asking for net force actually leads you towards that mistaken route because you figure, oh, I already drew the free body diagram. Why not use it? Why not use it is, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, cosine of 30 degree, thank you. <laughs> so with the correction, it should be 0 0.173, thank you. Uh, yeah, so sorry, so I mislabeled the theta. That's not the theta, this is the theta. Um, yeah, no, it's correct. So, um, so yeah, it's a, um, <laughs> so my, so he, yeah, it is a tricky question. And uh, I guess it's tricky to people who overthink it. If you simply use this formula, You'll define, uh, you'll get correct answer. And I guarantee you it is correct. Uh, when you do the detailed force analysis um, with the free body diagram I drew before, um, the key thing, at least for me to realize was the offset between the force here and force here. They are vertically offset. And the amount by which they are offset actually works to cancel out the torque due to these segments. And I guess, one way to kind of look at it is how that, um, how this could lead to a, a way to prove that uh, this uh, expression is, uh, or that this expression is generally true for loops of any shape, not just rectangular loops. But I think that I'll leave that up for you. It's not, um, we don't need to go in there. <laughs> That's, I think, the best way to summarize it. Um, 